so a very good uh, morning to all of you so we'll start the class so it's a absolute pleasure to welcome you all to the first lecture on grade 11 maths for the competitive level for the je level uh, i think some of you have already attended our regular classes for the board exams so just a quick background so i'm sort of the co-founder of edu infinite i did my schooling from st xavier's calcutta and then did my engineering from ju and did my mba from am calcutta so i've been a banker for the last 20 years and i'm based overseas and i'm currently working for bank of america in singapore so we started edu infinite in singapore which is a specialized education center and here we offer classes to students from the top international schools in singapore so we started our India operations and have launched our first center in Calcutta. And we have partnered with Yukti, uh, which is an IIT alumni body with over two decades of experience in training students for both medical and engineering examinations. So currently Yukti has about 25 plus centers across mostly Western India. And over the years, they have had a number of successful students, including rank holders in IIT number one, ISC number one, CBC number one, which have taken coaching from their classes. So we will be providing comprehensive coaching for the engineering and medical exams. And focus of this class would be covering both the board as well as the entrance exams. Uh, along with maths, we have classes in a number of subjects as well. Physics, chemistry, biology, English, and accountancy. Uh, for the math classes, we are fortunate to have with us our dear sir, Sri Anindo Mojumdar, with us. Let me just take a minute to just go through the, some of the house rules. So for the grade 11 classes, which you're covering here, you're covering both the board, as I mentioned, as well as the competitive exams. Now the classes would be interactive and the students would be able to clarify all their doubts, concerns. We will be having regular assessments to make sure the students are able to grasp the concept that is taught in the class. Uh, we will have regular assignment sheets provided to the students. For the, this class, we will also be providing detailed study material, access to online testing and practice platforms as well. And given the fact we are a partner of Yukti, uh, the benefit which we'll have is when you appear for some of these internal exams and assessments, you will be able to see your rankings across a wide variety, wide number of students from Mumbai, Gujarat, and other parts of India, which will give you a sense where you stand on a national level. We will be having individual WhatsApp group for each student. So you will be able to post any queries on the chat and they will get promptly addressed. Uh, you can also reach us via email and phone. Uh, our center manager, Mrs. Meena Shur will be monitoring all these chats. Uh, and in case you miss any of these classes, you can refer back to the recorded lecture session. Uh, with this, uh, I'll pass it to Sir. Happy learning. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Edwin Finance classes for the competitive exam. Now, some of you have already attended the old class for mathematics. Um, so basically, what is the difference? Now, before starting the class, let me tell you, as a learner, as a student, you have to follow something. It is like A, B, C, D, E. E. Attention. 100% attention. You have to look very attentive, otherwise, you cannot follow what the teacher is saying. B. You should be absolutely binary in approach. Binary in approach. Nowadays, it's a big problem. Even when you used to go to some coaching classes or even regular classes in school, but sometimes it happens. Some students, they don't want to, they always understand everything. Whatever teacher says, they can understand. 
that will not be your case. They will not understand that. So, as long as we are not understanding something, keep on asking questions to the teacher. If the teacher gets irritated, that is his or her problem, not your problem. Your problem is to clarify everything. That is final, you should have a binary approach. What is that? Either you have understood or you have not understood. There is nothing in between that. I have understood mostly, or I understood some a bit of that. No, you cannot. Either you can understand the whole thing, or you have not understood. So that binary approach should be there. C definitely concept. You will, if your concept is clear, you are in a position to answer or try any problem. Now, the once upon a time, there was no difference between, practically no difference between the board preparation and the joint preparation, the competitive exam preparation. Because only difference was definite that it is a big difference. Difficulty level. Difficulty level in the competitive exam was much higher than the regular or board level. So, Instead of doing only the things you have to do that time, you have to do the sums, I'm talking about maths only, sums of much higher difficulty level from different books. In that case, only one book will not serve your purpose. But nowadays, it is totally changed. Totally changed in the sense, now it is the era of MCQ. Multiple choice questions. Sometimes one is correct, sometimes more than one answer is going to be correct. So it's not the case of doing the sum, it is the question of getting the answer correctly. Sometimes by looking at the sum only, uh, you can find out the answer. You know, this is the problem. There are many disadvantages, many advantages also. What, what are the advantages? as we don't have to do the sum in most of the cases. So, you can identify some of the results which you cannot use in board exam as a formula, but here you can use as a formula. There are many such problems which we are doing that, I'll mention that, even the topic which I will be studying today, You'll get to face that. I'll mark few problems for you, which I cannot be treated as a formula in the board exam, but you can use those results. Rather, it will help you to do many sums with the help of that. So, above all, that concept has to be very much clear. So, that is C. D. Dedication. The passion, dedication for the subject. Sometimes people will say, We are not good in maths. We are not that good in maths. I found in my, I, I'm teaching in St. Louis for the last 36 years, I found many students, those who are not that good up to class 10 level, suddenly they got some energy, they got some passion, and they have done very well now they have established in life. So please, that dedication, love or passion for the subject should be there. If you start loving that subject, the subject will also love you. It is reciprocated, it has to. And if, the most important, effort, exercise. Practice, practice, and practice. Maths is such a subject that it's like uh, physical training. Those who are, I mean, practice for this thing, physical this thing, they have to do it every day. If you cannot do the physical training once in a week or once in a month like that. So maths is not a subject just before the exam, you become very cautious, you become very serious. And for last 
few days of practice pass, then don't expect any good result. Only regular practice for maths will help you. The thing is this, uh, in maths, basically in maths, uh, for the other subjects, I'm not underestimating any subject like that. Say biology, for instance. When you are going for the exam, it is knowledge based. Either you know the answer or you do not know. But in maths, it is not so. You look at the sum, but to work out it, then you can come to a conclusion. That is skill based also, concept based, skill based also, knowledge based, definitely. But apart from that, and that is why when you are sitting for the competitive exam, I mean, um, in mock case and uh, others, you will not suffer from this thing, the time management. But definitely in maths, definitely in maths. So, how to answer the questions? In what order you should answer them? I found many good students because those those are very good in the board itself. They have a they are very much confident, so they have a tendency to answer like from or one in order. And after say it is a two hours over three, after one hour and twenty minutes, you are still discovered that already one or twenty minutes is gone. Only out of 50 questions, uh, your share answered. 15 questions, 35 questions are left. Okay, it happens. It happens. And you never know whether that easy sum is given in the, in the, as a last sum or not. It's not like your exercise book. I mean, so for the exercise books which you use in school as a textbook. Here, gradually that difficulty level, in the beginning, comparatively easier sums, then we go back at the end, usually the typical sums are there. The question number is not like that. And there are many questions, even in maths, without calculating which you can get the answer. At least there will be out of 50 sums, there will be 10 sums like that. Okay, and in some cases, definitely, uh, it's not that today in the beginning I will discuss how the problems can be solved. In board exam, the only method is direct. You have seen your question paper, secular question paper in class 9, 10 level also, prove that this is equal to that. Like that, we start from the left hand side, that is equal to right hand side. Or in some cases, geometry, we know what is given and how to answer that. Or in the problems of, say, algebra or arithmetic, you have done, okay, this is the method we have. That is what is the regular method of guiding method. So let's see what are the different types of methods we can involve in it. End of the day, competitive methods will get the answer. We will do this. Maybe there will be many cases where I will be doing the sum as if I am sitting for the board exam. But how do I tackle the same sum when I am in the competitive exam? That is very important because you have to save time and you have to get the answer. How you are getting the answer, that is not the question. Okay, fine, let's see. Direct method. Direct method, but the way we are usually do the sums. Next is reductio and absurd. Um, you have done. Sums based on that, and this reminding you one thing that uh, loop 2 is rational, is not a rational number. The 
Sounds like that. How do we approach that? But what is the national? I just want to do actively. Good is not now. I also to tell you one thing: if you cannot understand even one percent, please let me know. That is that minimum cooperation you have to do with me. Okay. In that case, I will try to explain in a different way. Because I personally believe that if the student is attentive, that sometimes the student cannot understand because of the teachers. In 90% it happens. So in that case, please give me the opportunity to explain in a different way. Okay? Thank you. Look to is not a national number. Uh, how some of you have already put that can just mention in this group for this purpose. We just consider what is the opposite proposition, what is the converse proposition. So I start like this if possible, let the uh, rational number. Now, what is the rational number? Rational any number which can be put in the form of P by Q such that number one P and Q are integers. Number two P and Q are prime to each other. And third Q is not producing. If these three things are satisfied, we see that it is the rational number. Okay. Now, so if possible, let root to be a rational number. They are asked root to, to it is not a rational number. Why I consider let root to be a rational number? Well, in that case, root to can be put into the form of P by Q, where P and Q are integers, P and Q are prime. I square both sides. Two is equal to P square by Q square. Therefore, P square is equal to two Q square. You know that P and Q they are integers. So P square and Q square they are also integers. Look at the right hand side. Is it an even integer or odd integer? Obviously, two q squared, two times an integer, has to be even. And you know that square of an even number is only even, square of an odd number is odd. Understood? So p squared is even. What about p? It has to be even. Otherwise, how is it possible that the square will be? So, which implies that is P is even. Let P is equal to 2M. Why 2M? Because 2M is such a number for any integral value, 2M will be even. We always generate even number. M is 1, it is 2. M is 2, it is 4. M is 3, it is 6. Whatever integer you put for M, we will always produce even number. And that is why, as it is confirmed that P square is even, thereby P is even, I consider there is no harm that I consider P is equal to M. Fine. I put that one, P is equal to 2M. So 2M square. Put out here, 2m square is equal to 2 q square. 4m square is equal to 2 q square. q square is equal to 2m square. What about the right hand side? Even or odd? 
to m square is given. So q square is given. Q is given. Are we have shown you? P is given. Now I am showing q is also given. After the prime each other. What is the meaning of prime each other? Prime each other means two numbers they don't have a common factor other than one. We find them here because both are closer by two, which contradicts the second option, that is, which is contradicts the definition of a rational number. So here is the contradiction. Here is the contradiction. Contradiction will imply that. Our assumption was wrong. What was our assumption? Good to be a rational number. Conclusion, good to be not a rational So, in this type of reduction and absurdum, we can prove it by taking any other uh, example also. But it's a very common example which you have learned before. That's why I have to do that example. And another thing. This problem comes with the students only. Sometimes the we perform beautifully. Beautiful in the sense we will give all the change in such a way that it goes over your head. And you are also sometimes found to be very sensitive. Oh, what a teaching. As if parents have not understood, you want to get teaching. Don't consider that. We are here to communicate, not to throw the balls above the head. Our target is here, not there. So, in case you find a super teaching like that is going on in front of you, please keep on asking questions. What is the meaning of that? Everything is good for you. It is your duty to clarify your problem. Your brain will not clarify that. Okay? So, this is what is reduction and absurd. Then it comes elimination, method of elimination. That is very, very important with the cloud is. Nowadays, what happens? There are four possible answers. Suppose you are not in a position to prove something, but you can say that okay, the first answer it cannot be because of this, second answer it cannot be because of that reason. Like that, you can eliminate certain things. Even personally, I also I am not I am not connected to any medical thing. But in medicine, in the medical profession also, sometimes say in this pandemic situation also, they go for doing go for COVID test. If it is positive, fine. It is some uh, medicine or some treatment will start. If it is negative, then also it is plus. That means it is not. It is harmless. So by different testing and all these things, they try to eliminate and try to get concentrated in a certain position. Okay, the method of elimination. I'm taking a very simple class eight problem, and you know how to prove it, but I am not proving it that way. I take ABC. Okay, fine. If AB is equal to AC, if angle B is equal to given as angle C, B is equal to C given, this is given. To prove AB is equal to AC. Very simple, you know, you used to draw a perpendicular from here, prove that they are congruent by right angle hypotenuse. 
providing angular angle size. It was like this, you have to go to work in this two on this. This is the equal, this two equal, this is the common side like that. You used to do it, but, but I'm not doing it this way. How I'm doing, I'm sure you There are three possibilities. Can we? Better than this. A B less than is and A B is equal to this. These are the three possible relationships between A B and this. A B and this. Now, first option. If A B is greater than A C, A B is greater than A C, then C would have been greater than and C would have been greater than angle B. Is it true? No. Because this is what we get between us. Fine. Now the second option. A B is less than A C. So A C is greater than B. In that case, B would have been greater than C. Because greater side has the greater angle opposite to it. So A B cannot be greater than A C. A B cannot be less than A C. I'm not proving the third one. That has to be. Because one of the three has to be correct. Without proving that, I come to the conclusion that the only option which is left of AB is equal to A C. Is it that we have to accept that because the other two possibilities? Apart from this, the other two possibilities are not possible. So, so the thing is this how you attack a problem, how you apply a problem, that is very important. Say, say, I'm giving you, always think in a different way, in the easiest possible way. Okay, fine. Um, let us talk about uh, Umbunda. That is tournament, singles tournament. It's not how to know. Either you Lose or will win. There is no draw on the scoreboard. In a particular round, there are 64 players are taking part in the. So, 64 players, how many matches will be there? Come on, let us try to interact with us. I mean, 64 players are playing. So, how many will be the first round matches? How many matches will be there in the first round? Now, we are. Yes, sir. So, how many matches will be in the first round? 60 more players are playing. Sixty-four players are playing, taking part in a tournament, singles tournament. So, how many matches in the first round? So, two players will be playing in one match. So, how many matches? Thirty-two. Yes. Okay. In the second round, now thirty-two players are there. How many matches? 16 matches, 32 players, 16 matches. There are 16 players now. How many matches? 8 matches. Now there are 8 players. How many matches? 4. There are 4 players. Now it's 7 minor. How many matches? There are two players in the final. One match. So, so many matches will take place in that tournament. If it is not clear, always interact with me, please. You have to take that benefit because now we cannot talk with you face to face. So, it is the only way to communicate. With each other. If we find anything 
it is going above your head or you cannot understand, please let me know. And complicated debates on sums are not that difficult, I'm telling you. Only problem with this, say, suppose I will be teaching something today. It should be, or only be, you should know that topic in hand. That's why I have to pick up, I'm to pick up those topics initially, whose basic foundation is done already. If the foundation is with only attending the this is the driving of the competitive wisdom classes. You cannot get the concept. With the concept will build up, basic concept will build up from there. Here, we will discuss about different concepts, but different types of problems which you don't have to face in the regular exam, but you will be practicing in this particular class. And another thing, say, Paul, I'm talking about EPG. See, for this chapter. In the same chapter, law may come, inequality may come, function may come, the economy may come, many things may come in the future. Usually, it will not happen in the whole preparation that when you are doing a particular chapter, only the sums on Basically, all that chapter is there. But here, anything is possible. So, sometimes it may so happen that for the time being, there are some topics which are not there in the uh, regular case. We have to practice that. Okay. Um, we'll come back to this. But look, let us look at it in a different way. How many players are taking part? 64. How many will be champions? Only one. That is, other 63 players will be losers. In one match, one loser will come out to generate 63 losers. How many matches will you require? 63 matches. You can add it also. It has to be 63. Can I explain once more? This is also maths, but we are thinking in a different way. Here, stage by stage, we are adding five. We have, it will take, say, one week and there, 64 players. One will be champion, 62 will be loser, so 62 matches will be required. In that problem. So, always try to get the shortest possible way or the simplest possible way because our thought process you have to control our thought process you have to channelize our thought process right so method of elimination also is that important that is sometimes we can eliminate say out of four we can eliminate the two from the other two, if you play the game as a game, if you should play according to the probability. You can, and you can do your guesswork also at that stage. I'm not indulging that thing, but when out of four, okay, see, it's very risky. Most of the times you will generate negative marking because for correct answer you will get four, for wrong answer it is minus one. Next, inspection. Another very, 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 very important. We got a problem. How? Say I'm taking a problem like one plus three to the power x by two is equal to two to the power x. If I do it as a sum, suppose it's a whole sum, if I do, it's good. How? Uh, I divide both sides by 2 to the power x, 1 by 2 to the power x. 
This is 3 to the power half, 4 to the power x, 5 to the power x is equal to 1. I divide the whole by 2 to the power x. This is half to the power x plus this is root 3 by 2 to the power x is equal to 1. Half means I can take it sine 30 to the power x plus cos 30 to the power x is equal to sine theta to the power x plus cos theta to the power x is 1 for 1 to the power x sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. So it's equal to Compare with that, I get x is equal to As a sum, it's a very beautiful sum. But if it comes to the competitive result, look, to think in this way, it is a little difficult. If we know the sum in advance, fine. If we do not know the sum, then on the spot to get that, I mean that method is not very easy. What I do? I found if I put any, I first want to start with zero, random with zero. It is not happening. Then the left hand side is two, right hand side is one. But then I realized if I put x is equal to any odd integer, the left hand side will be irrational because 3 to the power x by 2. If I think x is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc., etc., the left hand side will be an irrational one. But right hand side is always rational for any integral value of x. So it is not possible that irrational number will be equal to a rational number. And when it will be an irrational number, when x is equal to and all in it. If it is even, no problem. So answer has to be even. The first even number, okay, apart from zero, which comes in our mind, that is two. Put two, one plus three to the power two by two, that is three to the power one, that is four, and two to the power two is also four. Okay? So, that is the way to do the sum, that is by inspection. And to some extent, it's not also inspection after the inspection. You can use your logic. And that is another way we write logical reasoning. That is another method we have to have Where do you use this? In Jomit. So geometry is not all about geometry. Geometry helps us to be to develop that logical reasoning. And that logical reasoning we have been in everyday life, we use that. Because for every statement in geometry, you have to justify, you have to give the reason for that. Okay? So Geometry, end of the day, maths is not a formula and its application. Maths is all about the logic. Okay, fine. Graph. Sometimes you take the help of graph only. I'm showing you one such problem that. Sin x is equal to x by 3. How many solutions are there? How many solutions are there? Now, how do you get it? Fine. If I ask you that 2x minus 1 is equal to x plus 2. Solve it logically. 
If I ask them this problem, and they have asked them to solve it graphically, can anyone help me? That how do I solve this graphically? The worst possible thing you will answer will be wrong. Nothing more than that. I'm telling you. And even I don't get irritated for anything. I always support you and I always salute your answer. Try it, try it. What's wrong? What's thing your answer will be wrong? And it is the problem of this age to go. You cannot open yourself properly. I mean, nothing. Come on. Can you give me any idea by which I can do it? I can solve this graphically. Yes, I can. I put this is equal to y z. So y is equal to x minus one. Y is equal to x plus two. I take these two straight lines, C, and from that. I get some value. I get some value. From that, I just take the point of intersection will become a five. I just take three, the value of the axis as the answer. Yes, that is it. That is it. I'm not concerned about why. I'm not talking about the ordinary value. I am just interested in the axis of value. That means I will be taking the two left hand side as y, same thing as right hand side also, because this is very good. Here also, and the point, another lesson what we have done. And the point of intersection of those two graphs will give us the number of solutions. Here, two things you have done. Number one, let them, that is equal to y. So I will be getting two different graphs for left hand side as well as right hand side. Then, after which, we we'll look for the point of intersection of the two graphs. And that point of intersection, each point of intersection is generating one solution. Okay. Now, apparently, if we look at this sum, look at this sum, it is one is trigonometrical function, one is algebraic function. Although the future will come to know about the series of sin x, even that will also help will not help you much to get the number of solutions. So let's see. This is zero x axis y axis. This is one, this is minus one. I out here I will get y by two. Y. This is minus pi by two minus pi. Okay, fine. Sine, you know the way sine zero is zero and sine pi by two is one. And if we draw the graph, it will be something like this. Here also, sine minus 90 is minus 1. It will go like that. If this is the wave of sine. So, y is equal to sine x? I have gone. I have gone. Y is equal to x by 3. If x 0, y is 0. What way is x, y, x, y, zero. Another point, if it is, say, x is, because two points are good enough, or going the graph actually, 
Although our teachers are parents or uh, elders who insist that you should take three points, but uh, you know it better than anyone that through two given points, one and only one straight line can be done. Third point was taken, you used to take to satisfy yourself that the other two points are also correct. If there is any silly mistake, then definitely the third point will help us to find it. To finding out the error. If x is 3, y is 1. Pi is 3.14. 3 is before that. So it will be something like that. Here also, okay, two points are good enough. So if I draw, because it's the last stage. If I draw, I find this is one point of intersection, this is another point of intersection, this is another point of intersection. So there are three points of intersection, so there are three solutions. So sometimes without actually doing the sum, we can find out the number of solutions. That is done by graphical. Method of verification. You have to prove certain things. In fact, today also you will be doing, when you will be doing, come to the actual sums that I will definitely do. That by verification only, we can get the answers. Because you know that you are not supposed to do the sum, you are supposed to get the solution, get the conclusion. And to do that, I just verify with n is equal to 1 or n is equal to 2. If one of the whole answers, I find only one answer is satisfying that condition, fine, we will go for that, by without doing the sum. We will come to know about that type of sum very soon by the way. Then, this proof by counterexample. Quite often in our regular discussion or debate, we do that. <coughs> Someone is putting some statement, and you, okay, this is not possible because this is the thing. We say, say, uh, someone could do it. So if someone is putting the question like that. Any number, any odd number greater than one, less than ten, is a prime number. Three, five, seven, four, nine, nine is not. So how do I approach attack that? Okay, nine is that number which is less greater than one and less than ten, but which is not a five. So your proposition is wrong. That is what is known as disprove by counter example. Uh, next one which I am putting it is. Uh, it is in your syllabus as a chapter. So when that time will come, I will definitely do that. But method of mathematical inertion. What is that? Uh, Say one plus two plus three plus what you got up to n. You know that there's a n in plane plus one by two. N is plane plus one by two. Very good. What is mathematical induction? You prove where n is and in the positive. N is a positive. So this type of proof must be corrected with. 
the natural numbers or whole numbers like that. And that is why we cannot do it for geometry. In geometry, this mathematical induction is not very popular. Another disadvantage of mathematical induction is this it is very time consuming. So, in this type of competitive exam, in competitive exam, we try to avoid this method at least. But in this case, we can go for the verification. Okay, fine. How the method is developed, I'm now just in short, I'm telling you. This is the statement for N. He said, statement N. Is this one true? This one means when N is equal to 1, the only, there is only one term. LH is UV, so we write for S1. LHS is equal to 1. RHS, you put N is equal to 1. N is equal to 1 into 2 by 2, that is 1. So left hand side is equal to right hand side, therefore S1 is true. S1 is true. S1. Okay? Then at time, you will try with two also, just looking by inspection only. If there are two terms, what will happen? One plus two, that is three. In the right hand side, I'm putting n is equal to two, two into three by two, two to cancel is three. So that is also. Let what n is equal to n, let it be two. How long will it go? One, two, three, four, it is a let it be, left, SMB. Two. That means that is one plus two plus three plus dot 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 up to m is equal to m into m plus one by two. I accept that it is true for it is true for n is equal to m. Now s n plus one s n plus one stands for one extra term one plus two plus three up to m plus m plus 1. We know that up to this, I know this is a m into m plus 1 by 2. Plus m plus 1. I take m plus 1 by 2 into m plus 1 plus 1. Look at the result. That is when n is equal to n plus 1 also, it is true. If I consider that it is true for n is equal to n, I can prove that it is also true for when n is equal to n plus 1. That means if it is true for 2, which you have already proved, or 1 it is true, automatically it is true for 2. If it is true for 2, automatically it is true for the next number 3. If it is true for 3, it is true for 4. In this way, it is true for all natural numbers of n. Okay, that is mathematical induction. Now, in future, we will be doing some more different types of problems when that particular chapter will come. Uh, that is another method. Uh, okay, for the sake of knowledge, you should, you may have that. We say vacuously satisfied. But we don't use that. I'm telling you, vacuously satisfied means. There are many such things in maths, many propositions which we cannot disprove it. Understood that point? Which we cannot disprove is known as okay. Let us say as it can be can, cannot be disproved, hence we take it, we accept the fact. But if we apply in your regular case, say, uh, the, the question is proved by Thakulas theorem. And if someone dies 
एंड ही कैन नॉट डिस्प्रूव पाइथागोरस थ्योरम हेंस इट इज प्रूव यही चलेगा अंडरस्टूड सो दिस आर द डिफरेंट वेज आई एम टेलिंग यू इट्स जस्ट अ पार्ट आई एम जस्ट आई हैव ओनली गिवन टेन ऑफ सच व्हिच आर द डिफरेंट मेथड्स to solve the problems now i am taking up a particular topic today as i told you unless you have done the foundation of that we cannot approach so today i picked up progression You know there are three types of progression. I'm just giving you certain uh, theories behind that. After which, definitely I will give you the problems. You know it very well that there are three types of progression. There are three types of progression. Number one. and what is the progression in p gp joint of hp ap what is the difference between any two consecutive terms in the same flow of progression okay it is known as that and to justify that a particular progression are in ap you have to Make tr plus one minus tr is equal to a constant quantity. That is the difference between any two consecutive terms is a constant quantity. In case of GP, it is the ratio of the consecutive terms. If it is independent of r, tr plus one by tr, if it is independent of r, then it is a GP. And harmonic progression, if we see as it to be a harmonic progression, if the reciprocals Are in AP. Obviously, for a harmonic progression, if it has got a term like zero, not of zero, automatically the corresponding AP will not exist. That particular term will not be defined. So similarly, if the numbers are in AP, then their reciprocal should be HP. Now we have done the. I mean to say, uh, the arithmetical mean, geometrical mean, and harmonic mean, and perhaps in the regular classes we have done arithmetical mean is greater than geometrical mean is greater than harmonic mean. But maybe just for one we have done that. But if there are n number of terms also, then arithmetical mean is equal to a one plus. It will not necessarily be one. It has to be has to be in arithmetical progression or any number of n numbers. This is the arithmetical mean. Geometrical mean is product of the numbers a one to a two up to a n to the power of n root one by n, and harmonic mean is equal to. Number of terms divided by the reciprocal form by a one plus one by a plus one by a n, and we have established for two and it is two for the other sort of arithmetical mean, the general mean, the geometrical mean, the general mean, harmonic. This inequality holds for any number of terms, although this is not there in the Regular course, but it is very much there in the competitive stage. That is, for n number of quantities to define the arithmetical mean, geometrical mean, and harmonic mean. And perhaps you have seen that there is a little difference between the two, between the two in the sense uh, in arithmetical mean between two and seventeen inside four arithmetical means. The concept of I mean, multiple number of arithmetical means is not there up here. It is taken with the average of n numbers 
product of the numbers n is root of the product of the numbers that is over dependent and number of observations divided by number of uh, observations divided by the sum of the reciprocal is the harmonic field but the inequality stands for here also okay I'll give you some sums definitely. Okay, let's do one thing. I give you some sums, and uh, it's a it will be a good break for you also because it is one kind of monologue is going on because I want more response from your side. Okay. I'm giving you some sums. So the sums which I'm giving you mostly came in the competitive exams.
Okay, these are the sounds. I'm just calling out. A, B, C, D, R, E, B, D, A, B, C, A, B, D, A, C, D, B, C, D, R, E. There are four options. If we want to A, N, R, E, D, H, B, then the expression A1, A2, plus A2, A3, plus dot, 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 plus A, minus 1, A is equal to the four options given to you. The sum of two infinity of the series A is equal to uh, 1 plus 2 by 3 plus 6 by 3 square plus 10 by 3 cube plus the vector of the infinity. All options are given. All also, sum of n terms of the series 1, 2 plus 3 cube plus 5 cube plus 7 cube is. All options are given. Then 5, pH term TP is Q and TP plus Q is 0. Then TQ is equal to again the four options are given. I'm giving you 10 minutes time. You try to do this sums, otherwise I am always with you. I will be showing you. Okay.
Okay. Hope oh, we are all back. I start from sum number one. If you want to answer, then please let me know. Please let me know if you have got some answers already done, the sum. The answer may be wrong, I don't mind. If you are very good in guesswork, also that is also okay. I want to come on. Are you there, yes, sir? I want to answer anyone, sir. I think number one. Will be none of these. None of these. You work for none of these. Okay. Then. So next, uh, I have to. Uh, I'm not sure about those. You're not sure. Third. No. Sir, other, all the others, I'm not all sure. Others. Okay, will you? Will you? No problem. Very good. Very good. Yes. Thank you. Lavia. Yes, sir. Ah, tell me your observation that if you have got tired or want to guess anything. Sir, I think the first one I got none of these. First one, none of this. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, all of Okay, fine. Uh, do you want to make any comment on the this thing? The, the plus five sums? All above. Is there an audio problem? I don't know. Maybe from your side. A, B, C, D, R, A, B, P. Initially, it may so happen. You are not getting the correct answer. That doesn't mean that after some time, that's what you are practicing. That is why you are practicing. So don't get deserted. If you, yes, another one. I cannot hear you. If you want to give your answer, then you may write it in the chat box from which I can find out because you are not audible to me. First one. Then ABCDRLAP means DCBA. Are you I just changed the order. I just changed the order. Then I divide by ABCD each and every term. Still, it will be AP. That is 1 by ABC, 1 by ABD, 1 by ACD. Over one by BCD. BCD. In AP. So what I have done? They are in AP. So in the reverse order, if I write, then also they are in AP. Then if I divide twelve by ABCD, they are also still in AP. And their reciprocals are this ABC, ABD, 
ACD, BCD. RN, RN. The numbers are in AP. These numbers are in AP. So their reciprocals will be in. Come on. Sir, I actually did not see what we did. Could you just come to the sign? Okay. If certain numbers are in AP, their reciprocals will be in AHP. Harmonic progression. Okay. And that is the thing happening. This will see is the correct answer. Arya, have you got this? And yeah, yeah. Is... Got it. Okay. Come to the second one. These are in H3, so their reciprocals will be in B. Um, now, let the common difference be D. Common difference be D. Okay, fine. Now, AR, 1 by AR minus 1 by AR minus 1 is equal to Rather one by this is equal to AR minus one minus AR by AR into AR minus one. Okay, that is equal to D. When they are in HP, their reciprocals will be in AP. I consider any two consecutive terms, AR and AR minus one. I'll Will be the one by that. That is equal to D because it is, they, they will form one by A1, one by A2, one by A2, they will form an AP. So that this will be D. So I get AR into AR minus one as AR minus one minus AR by. I have not yet finished the sum. I have just written up to this if it is okay or if you have got any doubt, please let me know. Don't hesitate to ask any question. If you are not satisfied, it's my duty to explain. Is it okay? Can I proceed? Don't depend upon the answer of the others. Okay, fine. Then I consider that it's okay with you. Now, A1, A1, A2. A1, I put R is equal to 1, R is equal to 2. Then it is A1, A2. R is equal to 2 means A1 minus, I mean the left hand side. A1, A2 plus A2, A3 plus dot 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 plus A in minus 1, A in. That is equal to. If I put R is equal to 2, what do I get? A1, A2, which is actually A1 minus A2 by D plus A2 minus A3 by D. Plus dot 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 e in minus one minus e in by d. D is the one by d is taken out a one minus a two plus a two minus a three plus a four minus dot 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 plus e in minus one minus e in. Everything will be cancelled in between except a1 and A in. A1 and A in. Okay? Is it clear? Now, you know the value of A1 minus A. You know the value of A1 minus A, then just substitute. Okay? I 
If we have any problem with them, uh, we can, I can show the two more steps. I write it as E1, E in by D into E1 minus E in by E1 in. I just multiply and divide by that one. Everything is cancelled one by D and one minus A. Then I multiply and divide by the quantity. What do I get? A1, A2 by D. This is A1 by A1 in, that is one by A in minus one by A1. You know, one by A in, one by these are forming an arithmetical progression. So, 1 by n is actually in its term of the progression that is this 2 will cancel, dt will cancel, it is a1, a2 into n minus 1. Is there any such answer? n minus 1 into a1. Sorry, not the only two, it was the end, the only end. So the first answer. Now, you are thinking that if so much time is given for this sum, how is it possible to solve the sum? Uh, fine. In that case, in that case, I'm giving you, proposing you one tricky method by which you can get it. But don't try to apply it always, but fine. In this type, you can apply it. I have to find out this so Fine. If there is only two terms, what will be the left hand side? A1, A2. Only two terms. A is equal to two. Now you put A is equal to two out here. Left hand side, I know this will be only a one into. If I put a is equal to two, this answer will be a one into. This answer will be two into a one minus a. Third answer will be only a one minus a. Fourth answer will be two a one into. No, which one is correct? A one into is correct. That means first answer is correct. So this is correct. Just this is what is verification. I put a certain number for that. If I find that all the results are different, then take the result which is supporting your result for taking n is equal to two. This is how to approach the how to handle the competitive sums. You don't have to do the whole sum like that. It would have been a good sum for the subjective paper in the board exam. But when you come to this thing, there you have to get the conclusion, not the working. So I take n is equal to 2. Immediately I find the result of only one result is coming. So this is the correct result. Right. Okay, come to the third one. The sum of an infinite, you will find that it is infinity, very infinity. Sum of an infinite GP is A plus AR plus AR square dot 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 of the infinity is equal to A by 1 minus R. The condition is R must be infinity minus 1 and plus 1. Otherwise, you cannot use that formula. Fine, let's count. S is equal to 1 plus 2 by 3 plus 6 by 3 square plus 4 
plus n by three q up to infinity. I divide by one third. I divide by one third. So one third is one by one third. Two by three square. Six by three q. How can I write 14 by 3 to the power 4? This is n by 3 to the power 4 plus infinity. I subtract s minus this thing, qs by 3. 1 will come straight away. I am subtracting plus 2 third minus 1 third, that is 1 third. That is 6 by 3 square minus 2 by 3 square, 4 by 3 square. Plus 4 by 3 cube plus 4 by 3 to the power 4 tending to infinity. I just to save time, I just add 1 and 1 third. What is that? 4 by 3. These two together is 4 by 3. 4 by 3. Now this is forming an infinite CP with first term. 4, 4 by 3 and the common ratio is 1 by 3 is acceptable because one third lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So the answer is A is 4 by 3, 1 minus 1 third. So 4 by 3 by 2 by 3 is equal to 2. And that is equal to 2 is by 3 is equal to 2. Therefore, A is equal to I hope one of the answers must be three. Yes, please. Now, as it is tending to infinity, so the way we used to do the sums by verification method is not possible out here. And as a sum, it is not very difficult to all of so, but Good one, it is not only an infinite tending to infinity, but also it is arithmetic or geometric progression. This is known as arithmetic or geometric progression. The general rule is whatever is there, from there, multiply both sides by the common ratio, then subtract and shift one place. That is the way for arithmetic or geometric progression. Okay. Can I have it? Can I have it now? Okay. Uh, this one, there's a gap to cube, four cube, six cube, eight cube. I know the sum of the cubes of first and natural numbers. You must have done while doing the progression chapter. It is a into n plus one divided by two whole square. But it is not that situation. So what we do is this. I give this one, two, 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 three, two. 4 q, 5 q, plus blah, 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 blah. 2 in terms minus. So when I write this, you may raise the point. First of all, there are n terms. How do you get 2 in terms, number 1? Second question, 2 q, 4 q, 6 q, it was not there, how do you get it? I am putting that extra, so I am giving them back to do, four do, six do. How many times in terms? This extra in number of terms I added in the first case, that extra terms I am giving it back. Why I have added that? I wanted to get 
the sum of the cubes of first in or twin natural numbers. Then only I can use the formula. Otherwise, I cannot use the formula. Understood? So, there are twin terms. So, what is the formula? A twin plus one divided by two whole square. But out here it is twin. This is twin into twin plus one divided by two whole square minus I take two cube common. Two cube common. What is left out? One cube, two cube, three cube, up to n terms. Two two cancels, fine. This is n square into twin plus one whole square minus eight into eight into this is this is straight away this that is n square n plus one whole square by four so this will cancel two this will cancel okay so we write so we write uh, i can take n square common from both and we get four n square plus four n plus one minus two n square minus four n minus two four n four n cancels four n square plus two n minus two n square that is all n square minus 2n square, that is 2n square. 2n square minus 2, 2 can be taken common. Two, all n square minus 2n square, what is it plus? Yes, I think we have not given the correct distinct correct option. This is coming as twin square minus one. Twin square minus one, sorry. Twin square. Or n square minus twin square, that is twin square. One minus two, that is minus two. Now, this time, if you ask me, is there any shortcut method? Is there any shortcut method? My answer is yes. Yes. What was the sum? The sum was, I'm rubbing it. I'm showing you how we can use the shortcut method. Although, by doing the sum, although by doing the sum, I got this answer correct. Here, yeah, 1 cube plus 3 cube, that was the sum, plus 5 cube, up to n terms. Let n be 1. n be 1, so answer left hand side is 1. If n is equal to 1, put that value. This is 1. This is 0. This is 13. This is 5. So without doing the sum also, without doing the sum, I can get that this is the formula, this is the form which is satisfying that equation if there is only one term, it will follow this way. Okay. Now the Last sum I told you in the next class I will definitely do that. I will tell you there are some results. In fact, I raised the question, raised this point in the beginning of the class. There are two sums. 
which is treated as in the textbook you will find those sums, but this is as good as a formula. Have you done one problem? You should have done. PF term is Q and QF term is P, then P plus QF term will be zero. PF term Q, QF term P, then P P plus Q is equal to zero. We have done one sum. In fact, if any one of any two of these three is satisfied, that will be automatically. If this is true, this will happen. If this is true, this will happen. If this is true, this will happen. Out of these three, we have done this now. In the very beginning of the problem, even maybe in class 10 level also, we have done. So these are certain, or uh, it could be like this. Seventh term is 11, and 11th term is 7. What is the 18th term? Still have a zero by this. This is not a formula, but it is so important that we can go through the results now. Last time, because this was the first class, and mainly we have used this particular class just to explain how to look at the problems of the competitive exam. And here also, to say for the two, three, in two, three occasions, I have explained it for 10 minutes. That's about maybe five minutes. All of a sudden, at the last, what did I do? Let's try with n is equal to one or n is equal to two, like that, immediately got the answer. Yes, it is all about the getting the answer. But in different topics, there are different ways to get that answer. Now, definitely, you will be provided that uh, worksheet for progression. And next day, when you come, just keep in your mind, mentally, you will prepare yourself, go to the textbook sums up, fundamentals of progression. We will continue with that. Because in progression is such a topic, there are many, many ways to, and one of the most important part of the our examination, that is competitive exam. It will come from algebra, it will main two topics. Sir. One is MPGP, HP, and the second one is quadratic equation. This was extremely important. And from this world, the major number of questions comes. So we want to work it out properly. And initially, we'll go to that track for which you have done the elementary or fundamental problems in the regular classes. So prepare yourself. So next day also, we'll culture with progression. Okay? Till then, thank you, best of luck, and stay safe and sound.